Christos, go ahead. Hello, coach. Yes. Hope you are doing well. Sure. Uh, first of all, Gordon Hayward is available to play tonight. Yes, sir. And uh, last night's game of Warriors. And uh, how how important is it to carry to 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 slow down Curry and uh, Uber? I'm sorry. Er yeah. What did you see uh, from last night's game of Warriors sure. against uh, the Magic? Well, they're a very good team. Obviously, you know, it starts with Curry. He's the head of the snake. Uh, you got to find ways to slow him down and limit him. You can't allow him to run freely. You know, he's he's given me nightmares over the years, you know, scouting against him and preparing for him. So it, it does start with him, though. Um, but they have capable players all around him. Oubre had a very good game last night. He had his imprint all over that game last night. He's capable of scoring, defending, rebounding, making plays for them in transition, knocking down corner threes. Uh, he's playing at a high level. You know, I know his numbers don't reflect that, but recently he's really starting to take off. Uh, and he has a chance to really impact their team as they move forward. Uh, and Wiggins as well. You know, Wiggins is off to a good start. I think he's going to have a major impact on this team as well. So, um, you know, these, these guys are loaded. They got talent. They defend. They play well together. They're never out of a game. Just like last night, I think they were down 15, 17. They come back and take a 13-point lead, 10-point lead. And that's the firepower they have. So a very dangerous group. We got to sit down and guard for 48 minutes. And um, that's a great challenge for us tonight. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Hey, Steve. Um, I think us in the media kind of make narratives out of players sort of returning home to, you know, where they grew up and stuff. So when it comes to staff playing in Charlotte over the years, have you noticed any, any difference with him playing in Charlotte emotionally, play-wise or anything? Well, he loves coming here. I mean, it's only once a year, so it's very special. And I know uh, a couple of years ago, Bruce Frazier told me that during the warmups, he, Steph had five or six people from the sidelines yell over, you know, hey, hey, Steph, how you doing? And Q would ask who was that? And he said, oh, that was my barber. You know, and the next guy was like, oh, yeah, that was the guy who, uh, you know, owned the ice cream shop down the street. And, you know, was, it was from one, you know, one, one guy to the next, like Steph knew everybody. So um, it's uh, definitely a special game for him every year and a little different this year, obviously without fans in the stands, but I know he's excited to be playing in this arena tonight. And have you noticed anything different about how teams are guarding him? I mean, his percentages have just dropped over the last couple of games against Miami and Orlando. Is, is it just a, you know, shots go in, shots don't go in type deal? Or is it is there a difference? in? No, no. It's just the ebbs and, and flows of the season. Um, not to take anything away from uh, Miami or Charlotte. I thought they both, you know, played very well defensively. But um, Steph would be the first to tell you he had – had some good looks and they didn't go. And the beauty of Steph and honestly part of the uh, secret to his success is he never, never lets a couple of bad shooting nights affect him. And, you know, he just gets right back on the horse the next game. And, um, and over the course of the season, the numbers just kind of, you know, play out. Uh, hi, Coach Carl from Maris and BC Bay Area in Telemundo. You said last night you were uh, you were going to watch the game again. Uh, what did you see from those last eight minutes? Well, I thought Orlando played extremely well. They hit some uh, big shots, some difficult shots. Um, so we weren't able to get stops. And then I thought uh, offensively the tape confirmed what I what I uh, felt you know after the game which was uh, we just had too many um, possessions where we went uh, one pass and a shot we didn't make them work and we didn't really have any good possessions where we uh, where we broke the defense down and got good looks so we uh, we didn't deserve to win what do you think of this kind of young pretty fun hornets team you're about to play twice in the next week yeah, they're uh, they are exciting. They're um, they play fast. Uh, tonight could could be a really entertaining game, uh, given the the pace that both teams like to play with. Um, so we've got to make sure that uh, we're playing with some uh, sense of of how to beat them, and we can't give up transition. 
uh, and we've got to be mindful of, um, you know, going good to great with our shot selection. We can't just turn it into a, a complete uh, track meet. Uh, we've got to go in with the idea that we're going to play with pace, but we're going to break them down and, and get great looks for each other. And if you go in with that idea and, and you uh, and you get back in transition, then you get a good chance to win. In a previous season, Steve, you guys got to practice at Davidson. And sometimes as you travel, you get to visit these places like players' hometowns or, or campuses that are really important to them. Do you feel like that's it's such a bummer that that's missing this season? Yeah, for sure. That's always a fun uh, part of the season, you know, is uh, practicing in different places. We go to a lot of college facilities. Uh, we meet a lot of people, you know, see college teams. They'll stick around, watch us practice, uh, meet the players, meet the coaches, or if we don't know them already. And I, I enjoy that part of, of the routine, and I miss it. How were the travels to Charlotte? How's, how's everybody's energy? Uh, I'm sorry, how were the travels to Charlotte? Yeah, how are the travels, uh, and how's everybody's energy today? Oh, yeah, it, travel was easy last night. Uh, we got in at, at a decent hour. We should be uh, rested and ready to go tonight. Uh, Steve, what do you see from James Borrego coming out of San Antonio? Do you see any specific thread from Pop on James? Um, yeah, I guess there's, you know, maybe a few actions that you see that uh, he might have picked up from San Antonio, but uh, – I think every coach you know, kind of has his own style and ends up playing the way he wants to play. But we're all influenced by the people we played for or coached with. Um, and uh, and then at that point, you're on your own. Hello, coach. Chris Osalis from Greece. What difference do you expect to see from your players tonight, and especially on defense? And the fourth quarter of uh, the game against uh, Magic, what did you learn from that? Well, hopefully we'll we'll defend better in the fourth quarter tonight. We've uh, we've been a very good defensive team now for for a while. Um, I thought Orlando hit some tough shots last night, but uh, I thought our we needed our offense to help our defense last night, and we didn't do that. We were getting bad shots, and when there's a bad rhythm to the game, you're more vulnerable in transition. So tonight, I'd like to see uh, better balance. Um, I'd like to see you know, more thoughtful offense. Um, where we're really looking to to drive and kick and move the ball and create great shots because that'll translate to our defense. All right, we'll get started here, Coach. Um, let's, let's start with Sam Perley. KB, hello. Hope you're doing well. Um, you touched on a little bit yesterday, the last time you guys were in this situation after a long layoff, uh, you didn't have the performance you wanted against Chicago. What specifically in that game do you look back to that you're hoping to do differently tonight against Golden State? I think a lot of it was our offense. I didn't think it was a poor effort on our part. It was just sloppy, poor execution, poor spacing led to turnovers. So um, that's what I'm looking for tonight. Let's be sharper tonight, uh, get to spots, give ourselves spacing, and get good shots. Sh shot quality will be important again tonight. Don't turn it over. Shot quality. I didn't see it in that game. Um, so uh, we should have fresh legs, great effort tonight get out there and be aggressive defensively, and hopefully our defense is creating offense for us tonight as well. Thank you. Richie Mandel. Hey, JB, this is Richie of the Busby Podcast. Good to see you. Good to see you. Golden State is a team that doesn't allow a ton of transition opportunities while you guys have made a point to get out and push the pace. What is your ultimate goal in, in trying to get early offense? Is it a personnel thing where you just feel like you have the right players to do this? Or is it as simple as just trying to get the defense, you know, out of position? It's a little bit of both. I, you know, for me, it's shot quality. You know, we're finding that, the, you know, we're getting high quality shots in those seven, first seven, eight seconds of a possession. You know, that's when teams are mostly on their heels. They're not set. In general, when defenses are set in this league, you're, it's a little bit tougher to guard. You got to execute. You got to, you know, um, you got more bodies that are loaded, protecting the paint, more in front of you. When we're sort of in this sort of flow, transition, early offense, I feel like the defense is more on their heels, and we have an opportunity to get to the paint. You know, for us, that's the whole key. How do we get to the paint? How do we get downhill? 
And for us, those first seven, eight seconds allow you to do that probably more than a half court set, you know, just in general. So, um, and then we have multiple playmakers that can play in those areas, you know, so um, I don't want to come down and walk it up every time and call a set. I think we're more effective when that ball's moving side to side and we have multiple guys touching it and, and finding an advantage that can get us to the rim. And from there, it's about spraying and moving the ball and sharing it. Thank you. Yes, sir. Danny Thompson. Coach Danny Thompson with the three-point conversion. Kind of piggybacking off Richie and Christo's question. Orlando is one of the you know, Orlando is one of the lower scoring teams in the league, and last night they hit 124 points. So far this year, Golden State is one in seven when a team scores over 124 points against them. And you guys are two and zero this year when you when you've done the same thing. How important is it to get to that 122, 123 point mark against a team that seems to struggle when somebody's putting up that type of points against them? Well, Danny, I'd love to get to 124 every single night, to be honest with you. I think that's the goal, you know. Um, and they're a very good defense. You know, it's going to be difficult for us. But I think playing at the pace that, you know, Richie referred to, and I think we're fourth right now in shots or field goal attempts in the first seven seconds of a, a possession. I think we're fourth right now in the league. So I like that. We're, we're putting pressure on teams. We're always at that line of scrimmage. That's what that's what's going to allow us to get to that 122, 124, 120. You know, even against a Utah team, I think we got to 121 against Utah. A lot of that is just our our, our pace, our pressure on the rim, our ability to spray the ball and move the ball. So, um, but for us to score at that pace, we do have to get stops. You know, in general, we're best offensively when we can get out and run. And I think you saw that in the first quarter of that San Antonio game, we were getting stops and we were getting out, we were running, playing with pace. I think we put up 33, 34 points in that first quarter. And then our defense, you know, had a bad quarter and affected our offense. So uh, we'll continue. We've gotten better in the half court offensively. We've gotten better, but we're at our best when we're more in flow, in transition, when we're moving and when the defense is on their heels. So the goal of Danny is to get to that number. We'd love to get up to that number every single night. We've only done it a couple of times, but to do that, we got to get it stops and get out and run and put pressure on the defense. Last question. I'll go to Richard Walker. Mitch Brago, Richard Walker, chaosportshub.com. You've got seven, this is the start of seven games in 12 nights. Um, what's the rotation look like tonight? And when are you guys heading west? We head west tomorrow. We head west tomorrow, but uh, our focus is on tonight. You know, this is a very important game for us. we got to get off to a good start. Rotation-wise, I'm going to just have to read this one. Uh, this is – I don't have anything set in stone right now. Um, I don't know what our guys will look like, feel like after six games off. You know, I have an idea of where, where we're going to go rotation-wise. Obviously, not having Devontae is going to uh, add a different element to our rotation. And it's nothing that we haven't seen this year, but that changes our rotation. Uh, bringing PJ back will change our rotation some tonight. But, um, you know, we could go 10 deep tonight. I could easily see us going 10 deep tonight, trying to keep our guys fresh, making sure that, you know, I don't overrun Gordon tonight, overrun Terry tonight. We're just getting back to full strength here, and we've been off for six days. So tonight will be important how I manage their bodies their, and their runs out there on the court. All right. Thank you so much, Coach. Thanks, everybody.